future I'd say it's been a while since you heard this request but my spirit is tired and I need your rest I want to hear from heaven a clear word from God a sermon of conviction straight from the heart I've been hearing other preachers say I don't have to change the most eloquent of speakers tell me I'm okay but it hasn't eased my conscience and I know it's not the truth so when you stand before us can I count on you oh preacher you say you want to be my friend don't be afraid to call my sin what it is and preacher tell me i can overcome but it's only by the blood of the lamb don't tell me like i wish it was preacher tell me like it is up the word and let the spirit lead preach until i've heard god speak to me don't worry about my feelings don't worry about my shame just preach the cross of jesus and that i'm to blame oh preacher you say you want to be my friend don't be afraid to call my sin what it is. And preacher, tell me I can overcome, but it's only by the blood of the Lamb. Don't tell me like I wish it was. Preacher, tell me like it is. The world is fading fast, and the foolishness of preaching is the only
get started. And uh, glad you came out for our Western Roundup Day. We've got uh, horses will be here in a little bit. Haven's Ice Creamery will be here. We've got barbecue from Mason Hills Farms out in Grand Bay. And so it's going to be some good eats, y'all. And uh, glad you came out to worship the Lord with us. grab our hymn books and open up to page number 571 and if you're able would you stand with me 571 when we all get to heaven let's sing the first second and the last 571 
that day. Page 587, page 587, victory in Jesus. Heard an old story how a Savior came from glory. On that first, I heard an old special music, good hymns to start out with, and uh, man, Western Roundup Day, help me out, yeehaw, amen, and uh, everybody looks great today, glad you came out to worship the Lord with us, we got a good lineup, lots of food coming, and are already here, so food's here, and so once we get done with our preaching service, we'll uh, have a good dinner, and uh, go outside, ride horses, whatever you want to do, and uh, get some ice cream, it'll be good, so glad you came out today. Uh, full house. Thanks to uh, everybody that invited somebody, and uh, we're glad you're here. Let's have a word of prayer. Ask the Lord's blessing on the service today. And uh, Brother Nick, would you pray for us, please, sir? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. All right. Praise the Lord. Hey, uh, today will be a little different with our services. Just give you a heads up. If you come back at 6 p.m. this evening, we may be here, but we'll be cleaning if we are here. Hopefully, we can get everything wrapped up and get out of here before then, but uh, we won't have our evening service this evening, and so keep that in mind. 
and uh, sometimes we we mix the days up a little bit, and people text me, Brother Tim, I didn't know y'all wasn't having church, and so uh, they say, well, you should have been here for the a.m. service, we told you, uh, but we're glad you came out to worship the Lord with us. We do have some visitors we want to recognize. Uh, good to have Mr. Robert and Joy Herring with us. All right, well, I'm looking for them. Over here in the back, yes, this is our first time at Grace Baptist. And uh, also, let's see, we've got Ryan Hare. Where's Ryan at? Looking for Ryan. Wave at me, Ryan, over here. All right, Ryan, yes, good to have Ryan with us this morning. And uh, let's welcome these to the service today. Praise the Lord. Always good to have visitors. Yes, sir. Where's she at? She's in Children's Church. Okay, very good. And his And what's her name, buddy? Amber, good to have Amber with us. Ember with an E, very good. Good to have Ember with us. She's upstairs in Children's Church, and so that's exciting. So uh, always exciting to have first-time visitors with us. I will give you a heads up. Uh, if it feels a little warm over here, we had uh, some kind of electrical surge this morning uh, before we met up here today, and we got a couple units on this side that aren't working. We lost a coffee pot, and so we had to, we had to order coffee. So we got coffee being delivered. Disaster's been diverted as of right now, uh, but uh, coffee's being delivered. It's, I mean, you got to have coffee with a, with an apple pie, right? And they're having a pie contest, and so uh, we've got that coming. So, but praise the Lord. Hey, we're here. Even if the lights were to go off, right? We we we're gonna worship the Lord. Have have church. We can see in here. We got enough lights, and so uh, to God be the glory. You know, I think sometimes we get too accustomed to all the uh, you know the the little things in life, the amenities in life. We we did a missions trip to Acuna, Mexico years ago, and you know the probably the greatest takeaway for me was this: is that we are a spoiled people Amen. in the United States of America. Uh, church, I, mean, I remember just there were went to all those homes and witnessing the people, and, and there were ladies out in the front yard with wash buckets, washing clothes on an old washboard, and just smiling at us like everything was wonderful and life was grand. And I thought, my soul, you know, uh, homes with tires holding the roof on. I mean, it was just it was like a squatter area that we were at, and uh, but I, I just we left there and I thought, man, to God be the glory, and uh, and so. We, we, we're spoiled on many levels, and, and sometimes, uh, you know, we just need to remind ourselves that we have it a lot better than we like to think Amen. of, so God's good. All right, and when the AC's working, it's just extra special, amen, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it's cool time of the year, so that worked out. All right, praise the Lord. Hey, listen, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's have, do we have anybody have a birthday today or in the past week? Any birthdays? I don't want to miss any. Uh -oh. All right, over here. Yes, okay. Is that, who's that, mandolin? I can't see. Merity, okay, very good. I thought they were pointing to the one that's behind the pen. All right, Merity had a birthday. Braxton, birthday yesterday. All right, where are you at, Braxton? I just saw him in the back back there, okay. All right, anybody else have a birthday today in the past week? We've got a $10 chick fil -A. Rebecca, yes, Miss Rebecca had a birthday. All right, anybody else? Very good. Let's give these three a birthday Amen. hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so that's exciting. All right, we're going to do this. Let's go ahead and choir. They're going to make their way down front. Everybody else, if you would just stand, turn around, and shake a couple hands, and we'll get started with our choir special in just a second.
All right, church, let's make our way back to our seats. Listen to the choir as they sing out this morning. one more time page 134 page 134 we're gonna sing the first and the third and that last one three and four and can it be
Amen. All right, if you got your Bibles, let's go to Luke chapter 5. I know you are, your mouth is salivating. You are ready for some brisket and uh, pulled pork butt. It's going to be good and uh, all the fixings that go with it. I do want to say, uh, just give a shout out to uh, Brother Joey Mason. Uh, he's, he owns and runs Mason Hills Farms in Grand Bay. And if you've never heard of him, check him out. Uh, he does all sorts of, they have a cattle farm, a beef farm right there on property. He has a slaughterhouse, everything, USDA approved, blah, blah, blah. Uh, their meats are in all the Piggly Wigglies, and then he has contracts with other uh, steakhouses and stuff around here that he provides the steaks for, but uh, does a great job. A fella and I met him years ago uh, hunting 300 acres over here off Chunchula, Georgetown Road. He allowed me and fella to come hunt his 300 acres. He never was out there. It was just me and fella on the whole place. 
and uh, kind of made a friendship with him. And then he sold the 300 and he started this uh, beef farm over here in Grand Bay. And so he helped us out with the, uh, with the barbecue and everything, and they do it all on site. So check them out. But I do want to say thank you to uh, Brother Joey Mason for helping us out with that. All right, Luke chapter number 5, Luke chapter number 5. Uh, this past Friday night, we drove to New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, took the bus. Our girls had their last away game, and uh, our, our girls' volleyball team, JV and varsity, uh, the younger squad, they did great. They swept both teams, varsity and JV. The younger squad, the JV squad finished first in our conference. The varsity squad uh, finished second, I believe. Is that right? Girl, the girls are shaking their head. You have a Tim. Second in the conference. Uh, and they both, both squads, varsity and JV, finished the year out 9-1, and one, so did very good, very good. Uh, but I was, we were coming back, and Katie made the comment about how it's easy to drive back from New Orleans in the bus with all the noise and everything going on in the bus. Uh, you know, it's easy when after a win. If you've ever driven back from an athletic event after you lose, man, it's rough. Like, you know, you, you're licking your wounds, and you're like, man, this is not fun. Uh, so it definitely made, makes it easier when you win, uh, but it's it's been an exciting you know been an exciting season. They still got one non-conference game left and then a tournament to play. But I've watched the girls drastically change from the way they first began at the first practice this year to how they're currently playing, and uh, you know and probably I would say you know, I've been here 25 years. Probably the most exciting season we've had in volleyball. The crowds are huge. Everybody comes out. They're, the game's intense. It's exciting. And, uh, and I got to thinking about it, right? You know, what, what makes the difference? You know, like, what is it? What makes a, a girl go from normally she just stands around on the court and now that same girl is jumping up at the net on every, uh, on defense when the other team is attacking and she's jumping up, hands up in the air at the net. You know, what, what, what makes the difference? Like, what is it? You know, a girl, you know, before you couldn't get a few of them to chase the ball out of bounds and now we've got three girls Every play, man, they are diving into the walls. And, I mean, they were flipping over each other the other night. Maddie did a, a flip out there trying to avoid running over one of the other girls. And, and everybody just all this, you know, uh, just activity and they're, they're going at it. You know, what's the difference? Like, what, what changed with them? What, what, what makes someone want to do that? Well, I think the answer is the same for every sport, no matter what it is. And it's very simple. You got to want better. Plain and simple. You have got to want better. If you don't, and, and, and Katie's got some girls that don't want better. It is what it is, right? I mean, oh, brother Tim, that's so mean. Get over it. It's fine, okay? There's guys on the basketball team that don't want better. I've got kids in my math class that don't want better. They do not want better, right? You've got people that work for you that do not want better, right? You know people that you work with that do not want better. If you're ever going to make it to the next level, if you're ever going to do better, here it is, very simple, you got to want better. And if you don't want better, here it is. News alert, you're not going to be better, okay? And uh, you, get, you get what you get. And, and so I'm just thinking about that and thinking, man, spiritually speaking, you know, in a lot of ways, this spiritual battle that we're in, it's like, you know, being on the basketball court in a battle. It's like being on the volleyball court in a battle. It's like being on the football field in a battle. You know, you've got to want better. If you don't want better, you're not going to spiritually better yourself at all. It's not going to happen. You're not going to wake up one day and it's like all of a sudden you're going to have revival and you're going to be ready to charge hell with a squirt gun. It doesn't happen that way, okay? You have got to purposefully say in your heart and mind, I want better for myself. And if you do that, you can find yourself in a better position just like athletes do. I think we can have the same thing spiritually. Now, you're all here this morning for Western Roundup Day. We've got a great crowd. I mean, we put out two extra rows of chairs just to be safe. I mean, we got horses coming. We got Haven's Ice Creamery coming. We got barbecue brisket in there. We got barbecue pulled pork in there. Listen, we got all the fixings. We got a pie contest. And, uh, and you're all here this morning. Now, granted, we did put a little bait on the hook. <laughs> Amen? Ain't nothing wrong with that. And so we did put a little bait on the hook. And, uh, but as your pastor, think with me. I want you here when there are no horses. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I want to see you here when there's not barbecue brisket sitting on the counter over there. That does make it better. I ain't going to lie to you, right? That's, that's good. That's good, okay? And uh, we can eat, and it's great. But I want you to be here when we don't have those items, when there's no ice cream truck outside for you and I. 
And in our text here today in Luke chapter 5, I, really, I think that we find a, a story here that shows what happens when people want better, when people want better. Uh, I wonder, are you here this morning, and in your heart and mind, you could honestly say, Brother Tim, I want better spiritually. I want better. Uh, you know, and, and you and I that have been in church for any amount of time, we understand this, that that is revival, right? That's revival. That's us wanting to draw closer to the Lord and have a closer walk with Him. So Luke chapter 5, you found your place. If you're able, would you stand with me out of respect of the Word of God? Read just a couple verses here, and we'll get right into it. And I entitled it, Do You Want Better for Yourself, Your Family? Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we've toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and, at, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said, said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all, and followed him. Lord, we do love you today, Lord, and we thank you for your word, dear God. We thank you for, Lord, the great number of folks that are here this morning. And Lord, yes, it's a special day, and we've got activities planned and good food on the menu. But Lord, the most important thing about this day is your word and, and being under the preaching. And I pray, God, that you would speak to hearts like only you can. Lord, no doubt there's people here that need to draw closer to you. Lord, no doubt there are Folks here that are not even on the team, Lord, they're not saved. I pray, God, you'd work in their hearts and minds and, Lord, uh, reveal to them their need of the Savior. And, Lord, for the, the believers that are here, Lord, that don't seem to want better in their life, God, help them to realize this morning that it would do them so much good and their family so much good if they would just simply want better. And, God, I pray you'd send revival to our hearts, Lord. I pray that you'd be glorified in all that's said and done. And uh, Lord, uh, just may you have your will in each of our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Do you want better? And, and we'll holler that like it's a game, you know, when the, when the, when the kids are playing, you know, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll holler out there, you got to want it. You got to want it, you know. Ethan, oh, he'll be screaming at him, you know. <laughs> Ethan, Emily had her best game Friday night. And I told Miss Rebecca, I said, it must be because you weren't screaming at her from the sideline. <laughs> Ethan will holler at her, you're not my cousin anymore. I disown you, <laughs> you know. And she had a great game. I mean, it, it was good. They all did really, really good. But we'll scream at them, you know, you got to want it. You got to do better. And, uh, and, and, and I think spiritually, how many times are we losing? Now, we know this. We've won in the sense of salvation, okay? Amen. Praise God. The battle has been won. Friend, listen, Jesus has already been crucified, buried, risen from the dead. Listen, the blood has been applied on the mercy seat in heaven. I'm going to heaven, okay? Praise God for that. But while I am awaiting my de destination, I want to enjoy the journey. Amen? I want, to, I, want, I want the journey to be something that uh, honors the Lord. I want the journey to be something that, that can, Lord can bless me. And so do you want better? Do we want better? Notice in verse number 11, there in our text, Luke chapter 5, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. This is wanting better spiritually, right? This is wanting better. Now, when they went out to go fishing, you know the text, you know the backstory. Peter said, I go fishing, and he took some of the other guys with him, and, and they weren't following the Lord at that time. Jesus had been crucified, risen from the dead. And, and so uh, at, at they were, Simon was doing his own thing, you could say. But now, all of a sudden, they forsake everything and follow the Lord. They, there was nothing they refused to give up to follow Jesus Christ. No besetting sin. There was no weight that they hung on to at that moment. Now, I understand. We can get revival this morning and we let go of everything. 
And we know that we battle all this flesh and the world and the devil. Uh, but listen, hey, we, we, when those things come up, hey, we have victory and we set those things aside again and we follow the Lord. None of us are perfect, right? We're going to make mistakes. But if we're not wanting better, we're going to make a lot more mistakes. Amen. Does that make sense? Like, if, if we don't purpose in our mind, I want better spiritually, then I'm not going to do better spiritually. And so here in our text, they forsook all, they followed the Lord. Athletes that truly want better for themselves, they'll see improvement on the court, right? But the athletes that say, ah, I really don't care, not that big of a deal, I'm not worried about what the coach is saying, they're not going to get better. They're going to show up every game, every practice, and they're not going to have great improvement in regards to their, their, their game play, right? And so let's consider what led to these believers here in our text forsaking all because that's the end result but let's let's back up and see kind of what led to that notice first of all wanting better is a desire Luke chapter 5 and verse 1 it's a desire and I've worked with a lot of people you know over the years and uh, secular and even in the ministry and, and there's sometimes you work with some people that just don't have that desire to want better right I mean they come in they clock in they clock out I, it, it's just kind of routine for them Man, they're just getting by to pay the bills, right? They, they really don't want better, you know. And, and you've met people like that. Uh, but, but, but having better and being better, it starts with a desire. Wanting better is a desire. If you notice verse number 1 in chapter 5, it says, It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, notice your Bible. What, what were they pressing upon him for? Like, what are they aggravating him for? What are they putting pressure on him for? What are they inconveniencing him for? Look what it says. To hear the word of God. Man, interesting. To hear the word of God. The people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God. It says, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And so wanting better is a desire. These people came to Jesus Christ in verse number 1. And, and, and church, may we be reminded that why they showed up. They showed up because they pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Okay? That's what it says. Now, there may have been some that wanted some miracles. There may have been some that wanted a, a handout and maybe they were looking for something to eat. But the Bible is very clear here that these, these people pressed upon him simply to hear the word of God. So I'm thinking in my mind the majority of them came for the right reason. Okay? Amen. Now you think about what we do at Grace Baptist Church three times a week. Okay? We're well, really four times, right? We have Sunday school. We have AM worship. We have PM worship. We have Wednesday night worship. Hey, we need to be reminded that we meet for worship, here it is, to do the same thing, to hear the Word of God. To hear the Word of God. I wonder, do you have a desire? Think about it. If you're ever going to get better, if you're ever going to do better, if you're ever going to be better, then it starts with a desire. Wanting better is a desire. The psalmist certainly did. He said, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Think about the psalmist. David's praying, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? I mean, do you want better? We should want better spiritually. When we want better, I believe this, according to verse number one, just like the people here, when we really want better, we will be where the word is preached at. Amen. Plain and simple. We will be where the word... Hey, if you want your paycheck each week, where are you going to be on Monday morning? You clocking in, buddy, okay? Where are you going to be Tuesday morning? You clocking in. Where are you going to be Thursday, Wednesday, Friday? You're going to clock in. Hey, because you want a paycheck at the end of the week. Now think about it. If we want to spiritually better ourselves, then we need to be where the Word of God is at. And it's a desire that we must have. Hey, the coach can't make the team better on their own. It, it doesn't work that way, okay? They have to want it. I mean, you can holler at a kid, an athlete, and you can try to motivate them, and you can scold them, and you can make them run killer drills, I mean, until they pass out and hit the floor. But that kid's got to want it. That kid's got to want it. That athlete's got to look in the mirror and realize, I'm not the best ball player. I'm not the, I, I don't hustle the best on the team. I'm not diving for balls. I'm not serving properly. And they've got to look in the mirror, do some reflection, and realize that I need to better myself if I'm going to be better. And so it's a desire. It says in verse 1, the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. They recognize it. In order for them to show up and ask for the word of God, they must have realized that they needed the word of God. They realized that there was a need there. They had a desire to hear the word of God. I wonder when's the last time you prayed to be better spiritually. Think about that, right? 
When's the last time you prayed and you said, Lord, help me to be a better father? When's the last time you prayed and said, Lord, help me to be a better mother? Lord, help me to be the wife that you've called me to be. Lord, help me to be the husband that you've called me to be. Lord, help me to be the dad, the mom. Help me to be the teacher. Help me to be whatever it is that you do in life, okay? Help me to be better at that spiritually. When's the last time that you prayed that prayer? If you're going to get better, you got to want better, okay? We've got to realize that we can be, well, preacher, I'm doing pretty good. No, you done messed up, right? Listen, there's room for improvement in all of our lives. From the pulpit to the last pew, friend, we all have room for improvement. We all could do better. Hey, we could all give a little more than what we're given. And so there must be a desire to want to do better. The people, man, they pressed upon him to hear the word of God. The reality is everyone in here is in one of two very dangerous positions. Think about it. Number one, you either have never joined the team, first of all, and if that be the case, that's a dangerous position. Like, if you're not on the team, I want to encourage you, sign up. You know, man, throw your hand up in the air. Sign me up, coach. Put me on the team. I want to be on the team. And I'm not talking about the volleyball team, okay? She's got 23. She don't need any more girls on the volleyball team. I'm talking about God's team. Amen? I'm talking about salvation. I'm talking about knowing Christ as Savior. Hey, if, if, if you're not on the team, get on the team. Well, preacher, how do I get on the team? Friend, listen, trust Christ as Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. The psalmist asked for it. He said, he said revive us again. And then he said, that thy people, thy people, may rejoice in thee. So think about it. Revival's for God's people. So wanting better... Really, what we're talking about this morning is for God's people, okay? you got to be on the team before you can even want better. You don't even know what the game's all about yet, right? And, and I should, I, obviously, game's not a good analogy there, talking about what we do as a Christian. It's not a game, but in regards to athletics, you, you know what I'm saying. And so maybe revival isn't important to you because you don't belong to the Lord. Maybe wanting better spiritually really doesn't matter. Maybe the idea of being faithful to the house of God, it's really not a big deal to you because you're just not even on the team, okay? I would say get that settled before it's eternally too late. Amen. And it's a very simple process, okay? Think with me. At the invitation, I'll give you an opportunity to respond, everybody. If you're unsaved, we'll have a man and a woman in the back of the auditorium, standing in the back behind all the chairs. We'll have an invitation. Everybody else will be standing. Heads will be bowed. Eyes will be closed. People will be at the altar praying. And you will have the opportunity to trust Christ as Savior. By sim all you got to do is simply get out of your seat where you're at, and you walk to the back. And if you're a man, one of our men will be back there. A lady, one of our ladies will be back there. Amen. And they'll talk to you about what it means to be a believer. Amen. And you get that settled, right? So getting on the team is extremely easy. And uncomplicated, okay? Amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And so maybe you're in that condition or there's another dangerous condition in regards to not wanting better. Maybe you're just not faithfully showing up for practice. Amen? Think about that. Man, listen, we're fixing to start basketball practice. And if a guy don't show up for practice, what do you think happens to him? He, he, he's, he's been, at the very minimum, benched, okay? And if it's habitual, guess what happens? Yeah, yeah. man, you wasting my time, you wasting our time. Go, go play checkers with somebody. Get out of here, okay? We, 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 don't time, we don't have time for that. So maybe spiritually, think about it, you're not showing up for practice. If that's the case, now the good news is God's not going to kick you off the team, okay? Amen. Let me make that clear before Amen. somebody takes me out of context, all right? Uh, now basketball, we're throwing you off the team. All right, it just it is what it is. But salvation, obviously, the Lord, you, you you're part of God's family, and so not showing up for practice is just detrimental for your spiritual well being. Psalm eighty five verse six, he said, "Wilt thou not?" Think about that. He said, "Wilt thou not revive us again?" And listen to what the request was. He said, after the revival, here was the reason. He said, "That thy people may do what, rejoice in thee." Now, church, think about that for a minute. Our degree or our level of rejoicing speaks volumes about where we are spiritually. Amen. You realize that? You, ever got, you get around some people, and, and they might want to talk about church, and that's fine. They, they'll, they'll pull the church card, the Jesus card, you know. They, they, they got that card down pat. 
But you can't fake the rejoicing card, Amen. all right? You can't fake it, okay? You can only smile and wave so long, and then the real you comes out. But God's people who are revived by the Spirit of God, they have no problem rejoicing in God. Man, they talk about the Lord. They brag on the Lord. They love to be around God's people and rejoice in the goodness of God. And the psalmist understood the great dilemma. And so he says, Lord, wilt thou not revive us again? Lord, we want to be better, Lord. We want to do better. And here's the reason why so that thy people may rejoice in thee. If you find yourself not rejoicing in the Lord on a regular basis, friend, listen, you need to want better. You should want better. And so you could be in one of those, one of those positions there, but I'd say both of them are very dangerous either way. Now, wanting better is a desire, but notice in our text, Luke 5, wanting better, it requires being coached. And this is important. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, but I think spiritually we forget about this, okay? It requires being coached. Verse 1 they pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Verse number 2. And then it says, I saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their nets. And he, Jesus, entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down, and look what he did. He taught the people out of the ship. Now don't miss this, okay? The people asked for it. Coach, we want to be better. Coach, we want to do better. Coach, we want to win a game. Coach, we want, to be able to, we want to be able to compete, coach. We want better. Okay, well then listen to me, right? That's what the coach says. What did Jesus do? He started to speak to them, to preach to them. Romans 10, 17, Paul said this, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Word of God. Think about that. Athletes that want to better themselves, you know what? They better pay attention to the coach. Amen. If they're paying attention to the coach, and implementing what the coach is saying, they're going to get better, okay? And so we have to understand this, church, that apart from the Word of God, there is no such thing as being coached spiritually. You understand that? Like, outside, apart from the Word of God, it's not like you can just sit around a campfire, sing campfire songs, and think you're going to better yourself spiritually. It doesn't happen that way, okay? Outside of the preaching of the Word of God, we cannot improve our spiritual condition. It's not going to happen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, okay? And so, just like athletes must listen to their coach, hey, listen, we as a child of God, we need to listen to our coach, the Lord God of heaven. Listen, and the leadership that God's given us at the local church, it is so very important. That's why we place such a high value on the preaching of the word of God. Hey, we've had parents that choose not to put their kids in our academy because we require church attendance. We don't care. Mary G. Montgomery's taking people all day. Listen, Sims Middle, you got, you got schools everywhere. Faith Academy will take your dollars any day of the week. Go sign up. We have parents that say, they'll make a decision. We're not going to come to Grace Academy because fifth grading up, we require church attendance. My thought is, why do you want a Christian school but you don't care about church? I, don't, I can't wrap my mind around that. We have what we have for a very specific reason. Wanting better requires being coached. The psalmist said this, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So that's where we get cleansed. That's where we get spiritually cleansed. That's where we get spiritually charged. And we get our batteries charged. Isaiah 58 verse 1, the prophet said, Cry aloud, spare not. He said, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's what he told the prophet. He said, show my people. Here it is. We don't like this. He said, their transgression and the house of Jacob, their sins. I could come in four services, three services a week, Sunday school, and just say some nice things positive to you, tell you how nice you look, and man, how much Jesus loves you, and man, he died for you and rose again for you. And never mention that S-I-N word, right? Never mention it. And, and, and you might be real happy with Pastor Tim. Some of you wouldn't. Some of you would be like, preacher, you better start preaching on some things around here, or we're going to find a place that will. And, but, but some people would be okay with that, right? Have their little Joel Osteen sermon, and they're good to go, right? Friend, listen. Wanting better requires being coached. Now, we think about coaching, okay? We think about practice. We have four practice sessions a week here. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. If you want better, then go to practice. Go to practice. Very simple concept. If you want better. This is what will happen. You will call my cell phone. It will ring as soon as tragedy strikes your life. As soon as your entire world is flipped upside down, you're going to send me a text or a phone call 
and say, Brother Tim, would you please ask the church to be praying? Bro, you, mean, you mean the people that meet on Wednesday night to pray when you're not here? Brother Tim, oh, did I say that? Yes, I did. Pray Brother you. Tim, would you please pray for us and our situation? We got something, and, and you're going to want God. You're going to want the people of God. Listen, if you want better, then go to practice. Amen. Go to practice. Amen. We, we, we had a family in our church one time, and I'll not name names. That would be very inappropriate and unprofessional and unethical. We had a family in our church. Teenagers were in the school, teenagers in the church, and they sit and they come in here, and uh, song leader says, hey, turn in your song book, blah, 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 everybody singing, and, and, and the teenagers just the whole time, no singing, no singing out to the Lord. Okay, so, so a good youth director, a good youth pastor comes alongside of them, you know, very, very, very politely, nicely, because he loves them. He says, hey, Austin, man, you're a Christian, man, you ought to sing out for the Lord. Open that hymn book up, man. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. If I care about you and I love you, and you're a teenager in, my, in their youth department here, I'm trying to encourage you. Oh, mom and dad didn't like that. Oh, no, you don't, you don't come tell my teenager to sing out. He's a youth pastor. So the youth director does. Youth director's concerned about the spiritual well-being of the kids. And you know what blew my mind about that situation was? The same parents have no problem with the coach coming out there and saying, hey, get down on that ground and catch that bounce ball. Get down there. You chase that ball. You, you shoot that ball better. Hey, you box out. You, 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 you box out underneath the net, son. They have no problem with a coach doing that in regards to sports, but they get their feelings hurt when somebody in a spiritual position says, if you want better and you're going to do better, you need, you need to want better if you're going to do better, right? That's right. I mean, I just, I'm like thinking, what, what, what are we thinking? Like, what are we doing, okay? Why are we here? Friend, listen, if we don't want better, we're not going to be better. If you see my kids not singing out from their hymn book, you have my permission to say, hey, fella, won't you sing out for the Lord? Fella, are you a Christian? I don't mind you doing that. Hey, Chloe, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Yes, sir. Well, then you ought to sing out for him. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I, you're not going to, why would that bother me? I am thankful for people that care about the spiritual well-being of my family. Amen. Praise God for it. For a youth director and a youth director's wife that have come alongside of them and try to help them out in spiritual matters and not just sit there and not say anything to them. Come on. That's not good. But you know, the you know, people just, it just, it's such a double standard. We want one thing from the world side of it, but we, we don't expect the same thing from a spiritual side of it. Friend, listen, those girls on the volleyball team have, have gotten really good this year, but I'm telling you, they, and, and I'm not trying to give them the big head, they'll go in the tournament and lose everything now. They've done very good. But I'm telling you, it's because they want better. They want better, right? And, and they want it better, so they're doing better. They're listening to the coach. They're implementing what the coach is saying. Wanting better requires being coached. And if you have a problem with being coached, you're not going to get better. It's not going to happen. I can't believe Brother Tim said that. I can't believe he brought that up. You ought to be thankful that I had enough guts to bring it up. Amen. 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 Praise God for preachers that will stand on the truth of the Word of God. So in verse number 3, we see the great importance of allowing ourselves to be coached if we truly want better for ourselves. If not, then just get practice. Now, wanting better, number 3, requires obeying, not just hearing. Now look at verse 4. This is interesting. And you all know this story. This is really old hat to a lot of y'all. But it just goes along with this. It just, this sermon is wanting better. This story fits it perfect. Think with me. He said, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we've toiled all the night. You know what I hear in that? And I hear this. And I see it in coaching, right? The coach can say something, and a lot of times the athlete responds with an excuse. Well, I've been trying that. I've already done that. I've already practiced jumping and doing this, and I've already, I've already tried that. It's just not working for me, you know. No, no, listen. All right. Simon gives an excuse, okay? Well, we, we've toiled all the night. We've toiled all the night. We've already tried this, and, and the Lord's told him to do something. He is coaching him. And he said, we've toiled all the night. Now, notice Peter's response to the Word of God, okay? Because uh, notice the Lord gave Peter a command in verse number 4. Everything up to this verse has been collective, and now it is personal. Now you get to verse number 5, notice his response. 
He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Church, this is, that, this is a very great point here at the end of verse number 5. And, and don't miss this, okay? Peter obeyed the coach even when it didn't make sense. That's, right. that, that's crucial, right? Amen. Hey, some of you have guys that work for you. They're not going to always understand why you're telling them what you're telling them, okay? They, they might not get it. They don't understand the process. They may not understand why you got to do it this way and why you can't just fudge a little bit over here. Listen, and you know what you expect? You expect them to simply do what you told them to do. Amen. You expect that, right? Because you know this. They might not get it, but you have a different level of understanding and discernment, and you know that things need to happen a certain way. So you say, hey, listen, buddy, you might not understand me, but you got to do what I just told you to do, okay? Or they're going to get their pink slip. They're going to get fired, okay? Get their walking orders. And so Peter, even though he did not understand, even though it did not make sense to him, he still obeyed the coach. And friend, listen, that's wanting better, right? Well, I don't know why boxing out is such a big deal. Why, why is the coach always talking about boxing out, boxing out, boxing out? Because if you'll ever do it, you'll realize it pays dividends in a basketball game, you know? Why, why is the coach always saying, hey, we need to chase the ball when it's going out of bounds? Well, if you start doing it, you'll realize you might return some of those that you normally would have missed. And so even spiritually sometimes, here it is, the coaching might not always make a lot of sense to you. But listen, if you want better, then you just obey, right? You obey. And I believe God will give understanding. I believe after we implement it, we start to see, man, okay, I see this. This does work. This does help. So it says, nevertheless, verse 5, Peter obeyed the Lord. Great lesson for us. He obeyed regardless of how he felt about the command of God. Now, there are some athletes, the coach can holler at them, the coach can tell them to their blue in the face what to do, what not to do. And there's some athletes that refuse to implement the process. They're told over and over and over what to do, what not to do. Then they get out on the court and they just do their own thing in that moment. And guess what? It ends up costing them some points because of that. Now, I, and I, I think I heard Saban make this comment. He said something on the lines of everybody is everybody can be average. In other words... Just by being born, you're, you're expected just by the world standards just to be an average person. But now think about it spiritually, okay? Now he was talking about football. But to be great, and I don't mean to make in a prideful way, but to be a, 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 a disciple, but to be someone that's going to follow the Lord. I mean someone that's going to sell out and that's going to forsake all and follow Him. For listen, that doesn't just happen, Okay everybody's average you're here this morning if you're saved by the grace of God at the very minimum you're an average believer okay whoop de doo you don't get a party hat and horns for that okay everybody can be average but if you're going to see better and do better and have some victories in your life you got to want better you got to want better verse 5 Peter obeyed even when he didn't understand verse 6 notice what happened and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break, verse number 6. What does that mean, preacher? Well, when you obey the coach, great things happen. Amen. When we do what we're told to do, there's benefits to that. The decision of Peter's personal revival, uh, or his personal revival hinged upon that decision of whether I obey or whether I disobey. And the same thing is true for you and I. Verse number 7, it says, And they beckoned their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. And Simon Peter saw it and fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And so this wanting better, it's a desire. It requires being coached. It requires not only listening to the coach, but implementing what the coach says. And then number five, I'm done. The result of wanting better and doing better. Look at it in verse 8. It says, He fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Church, do you realize that number eight is, is the greatest part of the whole story? Like, the great catch of fishes is nothing compared to verse 8. It doesn't even compare. It doesn't even hold a candle to it. The fact that, that, that Simon Peter, right, this disciple that was out in left field doing his own thing, not listening to the coach, not following the Lord, hey, in this moment, he, he wanted better, he did better, he obeyed when it didn't make sense, and now he is on his knees, he's on his face at the knees of Jesus. Friend, listen, he has humbled himself before the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That is the greatest thing that took place in this story. Forget about the fishes, greatest catch of his, of his career. No, the greatest thing that happened was Peter saw himself for who he was and he saw Jesus for who he is. And friend, listen, if you're ever going to see better and do better, it's going to require this humbling. The result of wanting better and doing better is that we'll have revival. Isaiah 6, 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. One man gets right, and then real quickly, look at verse 9. It said, For he was astonished, and all, and all that were with him. Okay? And all that were with him. And then look at verse 10. It says, And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Look at verse 11. It says, and it says, and when they had brought their ships to land. I mean, think about it. God singled out Peter. He singled out the leader because he knew this, that if Peter gets right, if Peter humbles himself, that others will follow him, that others will be influenced. And I'm convinced we've got folks in churches today who are not wanting better because the people that they run with do not want better. Hey, it may be that God's speaking to you this morning. Hey, listen, teenager, and maybe God needs you to want better so another young person can want better. But if you never want better and you never do better, guess what? You're leading other young people down a path that's it's not better. It's not good. Uh, and, and, I mean, maybe a father. Think with me, Dad. Your son will never want better if he doesn't see you want better. Not ha- now, let me ask you. I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you okay with that? Think about that. Are you okay with your flesh and blood, with your child, with your son, with your daughter? Hey, going the way of the world and making some bad decisions and wrecking and possibly wrecking their life spiritually and physically, all sorts of problems, immorality, drugs and alcohol. Are you okay with that? If not, then it's time that you want better. Because if you don't want better, he's never going to want better. Mom, your daughter is never going to want better if you don't want better. If you're just happy showing up on the court going through the motions, never listening to the coach, never implementing what you hear week in and week out and week in and week out, your little girls are not going to want better. It it ought not surprise you when they turn 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 and you got some major problems. It ought not surprise you. But that's hard, bro, Tim. Amen. The result of wanting better and doing better, Peter is on his face before the true and living God. And think about it. It was a very simple command. Hey, Peter, let down your net. But, but really? I mean, I mean, and we can apply this to any area. Hey, hey, Peter, be sure to tithe this week. But really, I already, I already did that a couple weeks ago. And, you know, no, Peter, let down your net. Hey, 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 church, hey, holiness is a big deal. Let down your net. Hey, being faithful to the house of God is a big deal. Let down your net. Well, I just, I've already tried that once. No, listen, you're not going to get better if you don't want better. Bottom line. And there's some of you here this morning, and God's been dealing with you about wanting better for a long time, and you may be at a crossroad where God says, enough is enough. He has been patient. He has been long-suffering. Hey, the Holy Ghost of God has been working and moving in your life and blessing you when you don't deserve any of it and being gracious And he's trying to urge you to want better for yourself spiritually. And you may walk away today and say, I don't want better. That may be a bad decision. Invitation is very simple. Hey, do you want better for yourself, for your kids? I want better for my kids than I do for myself. You ever thought about that? Like I want better for my children than I do for myself. I I, I just kind of think every parent should be that way. I don't want my kids to make some of the, the dumb mistakes that I made. Amen. Man, listen, they don't, they don't need the T-shirts that Brother Tim's got. That's right. They don't even need to know they exist as far as I'm concerned. Amen. But you've but you got to want that. And if you don't want that, then, you, then, then you're not going to get better. Maybe you're here today and you're not on the team. Hey, listen, very simple. Trust Christ today while you have the opportunity to do so. For we that belong to the Lord, let's do like Peter and just... Let's let down the net. Even if we, in our minds, it just doesn't make sense, right? 
But you know that the Holy Spirit is saying, let down the net. Let down the net. Let's stand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Maybe here today you'd say, Brother Tim, I'm not sure I'm a Christian. There's never been a time in my life where I've accepted the Lord as my Savior. But Brother Tim, I would like to make that decision today. Would you pray for me? Friend, if that's you, I just want to pray for you. I'll not embarrass you. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. But I would ask you just to quietly slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I've never been saved, but I'd like to make that decision. Anyone at all, real quickly, say, Preacher, pray for me. Just slip that hand up. God bless you. I see the hand in the back. Anyone else, say, Preacher, pray for me. Anyone else, real quickly, say, Preacher, pray for me. My church heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Think with me. Do you want better? Do you want better? Do you want better for your kids? Oh, they're young right now, so it's not... I've, I've, I've got teenagers. I know how it works. Hey, when they're 10, 11, 9, 8, 7, you don't see it. Oh, but when they turn 13 and 14 and 15, oh, you just wait. You better be buckled in and holding on because if you're going to survive, you better be where you need to be spiritually or you're going to be in for it. I promise you. Do you want better for them? Do you want better for your family? How about yourself? If so, let's bow the knee this morning and tell God Father we love you Lord we thank you for Christ our Savior we ask you to bless this invitation Lord I pray that you have spoken to hearts today Lord the greatest thing that can happen for we that know you is for you to speak to our hearts and Lord I pray that Christians all over this building would want better and God I pray you'd help us to just make that sacrifice Lord and, and let down the net whatever area it may be in life let down those nets maybe multiple areas help us to do that we ask in Jesus name Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Piano's going to play. Let's take a moment and bow the knee. God spoke to your heart. You just want to pray and say, Lord, help me in this area. God, I want better. Lord, I want better. I want better for my kids, better for my, my family. Lord, I want better. Better for my youth group. How about it, teenagers? Are you happy just being worldly and carnal? You're not thinking about eternity? Oh, you got your fire insurance and you're proud of that. Oh, yeah, Brother Tim says, are you a Christian? You're so quick to say, yeah, Brother Tim, I'm saved then why aren't you living like it? Why are you not living like it and talking like it? Why are you engaged in conversations and things that you know do not honor God? How about it, Mom and Dad? Same thing for us too, not just the young people. Do you want better? If so, it requires a desire. You've got to have the desire. Ask for it. Like the people did. They pressed upon Him for the preaching of the Word of God. And then they, then they allowed themselves to be coached. If you want better, then you, you got to listen to the coach. And then they implemented what they heard. He let down the net, even though it didn't make sense to him. And God blessed. Let's take a moment, talk to the Lord. If God spoke to your heart, hey, listen, don't delay, don't delay. Whatever it is, it may have nothing to do with the sermon, but if the sweet Holy Spirit of God tugged at your heart this morning, whatever area that is, you are to do business with God parents when these kids get older the problems become monumental it's not just little taking toys from another kid not just little didn't stay in the backyard when they were supposed to and they ran outside the fence no 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 it, it, they get exponentially more difficult and Satan is going to throw everything at us and we better be where we need to be spiritually or we're not going to survive our kids are not going to survive plain and simple do we want better? Amen. God bless you, church. I trust we all want better. Don't be satisfied with... Uh, status quo you know uh, the Lord's coming soon amen and uh, I tell you what we're gonna we're gonna be rejoicing and praising his name all throughout eternity why not start now amen. you know I mean man it's gonna happen so all right hey listen we've got barbecue we have got all sorts of great things uh, lined up for you brisket and uh, what, are, what are these cats doing they're waiting for you Okay, all right, amen. I have no idea. Why are they holding black things over the window back there? What, what's about to happen? It's okay, all right, very good. <laughs> the coach don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right, Brother Larry, I, get, I, don't, I don't know what's... I was fixing to say, let's pray and go eat some barbecue brisket.
Amen. Okay. Amen. I usually don't do that, but let's go ahead. Can I put my hat on? Every once in a while, we can always do something. Oh, that man. I see a slideshow. <laughs> so, we can surprise them. Your mama gave them pictures. And their family. Oh, no. And, and <laughs> Did you know well, We only got one service today. And what you heard this morning was why many of us are here. Because we're here because we want the truth. Amen. Did you and there's this? many a church today that's not giving it anymore. Amen. This is uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. Uh, and so everything's been going on behind the scenes. Um, I was given some instructions of what we think we ought to do. So uh, we've made our first um, production. <laughs> and uh, uh, but we love Brother Tim. We come here because we want him to skin our eyes. Because God's given him instructions, not us. The people don't tell him what to preach. If that starts, he may be having to find another job. But I think most of us understand a lot of times the things that we hear out of his mouth is really, he don't want to have to tell you that. But because of what he stands for and what God stands for, he has to give you what you need to hear. Yes. What you do with it is your business. And we've put a, are you ready? We haven't been able to get everybody, and we had a we had a certain period of time to be able to pull this off. And so, if you're ready, here's our first production. And I'm in Canada, having some great meetings, but I miss you. I'm very thankful for your faithfulness, your love for the Savior, and being there for so many years, and love for souls and love for people. I'm very proud of you, and I pray that you'll have a great day. And I look at you as a son of the faith, but know that I love you very much, and I try to pray for you daily. God bless you. Hey, Brother Tim, Brother Kenny Ralph, Pensacola, Florida. Just wanted to give you a quick word of encouragement, and thank you so much for the years of faithfulness and the influence and impact that you've made on me and my family. And I never would have imagined that what started in a Sunday school room in the back of grace would lead me to where I am today. And I just wanna say thank you, brother, for your faithfulness and commitment to the Lord. Hey, Brother Tim, we really appreciate you. We love you and appreciate you, thanks. Thank you, Pastor Tim, love you. Hey, Brother Tim, uh, oh, it's uh, Pastor Appreciation Month, and we just wanna let you know that we love you and your family, and really do appreciate everything you do for us and I appreciate you standing on the word and not wavering. Thank you for all you do. But Tim, we appreciate everything you do. Tim, I want to thank you for all that you've done for our family. You've been a great inspiration to me and helped me to grow as an individual and you've always been there for my family. We thank you and love y'all. Hey Pastor Tim, it's the Dugans here. We just wanted to say thank you so much for surrendering your life to um, the ministry and helping mentor our family and watching us grow and loving us as we love you. Hey, Brother Tim, we just want to tell you we love you. We're glad you're our pastor. We appreciate you. And just know this, you are loved and appreciated. Hey. By everyone. And thank you for all the lessons you teach us. Yes. And being so humble and gracious and compassionate. Oh, and letting the light shine. Thank you. Go Cooks. Hey, brother, we just want to take a moment to say thank you for all you do. Just 
just for being our pastor. And <laughs> just uh, such a great mentor to me and my family. Just to know what it's like to be a good, godly Christian family. And we thank you for just being such great role models to us young adults with three girls that we have to raise. Not alone, but with someone like you and Miss Oak behind us and such a great church to look to for support. Thank you, Brother Tim, for being here the years you've been here. And thank you for the preaching you give us. And thank you for this church. Hey, Pastor, uh, we just wanted to take a moment to thank you for everything you've done and uh, your uh, stand for the Word of God. And uh, we appreciate uh, where you're, the direction you're heading uh, with this church. And just uh, we just want you to know that we're behind you. And uh, we just want to thank you and say we love you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Tim. We are so appreciative of you, Pastor Tim, and how you stand unapologetically on the Word of God. And we honestly look forward to coming every week to hear you open up God's Word and preach the truth. We also thank you for the opportunities we have to uh, serve here, minister to our community, to reach out to those who are in need of salvation. And we've seen the fruits of your efforts. And um, we, we, we thank you for your your parenting styles and what we can learn from that. Thank you for uh, everything you do for us. Hey, Brother Tim, thank you for all that you do for us, and we love you. Thank you for being such a wonderful pastor. Hey, Pops, thanks for being our pastor and uh, leading us in God's will. We love you and keep on doing what you're doing. Brother Tim, we appreciate you and your family for all the years that you've given us and that you've stayed to the stuff and that you've affected our families in more ways than you'll ever know. And we really do appreciate it from the Marlins. Thank you, Brother Tim, for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Brother Tim. We appreciate you and everything you've done. Okay, Pastor, thank you for all you've done. Thank you! This is the Harris family here. We'd like to thank you, Pastor Tim, for being our pastor, for being a man that stands firm on the Word of God. We love you, Pastor, you and your family, and we're praying for you. Thank you, Brother Tim, for the prayers. Huh. Thank you, Brother Tim, this is honestly the best church I've ever been to, the most loving. You preach the Word, and thank you so much. I want to thank you, Pastor uh, Tim. Um, I've really enjoyed my time here at the church with uh, you and your family and the uh, church family. So thank you. Brother Tim, we are so thankful for how you lead our church and how you pray for us and you're there for us when we need you. And we're so thankful that you're our pastor, even though you harass us constantly for being all people. Hi. I just want to say how much I love being here. so much life into the church with your family with all the people that you brought in and you've been a blessing to and I'm the least of those but I've received so many blessings and I'm so grateful and thankful to the Lord for you being here. I love you. Pastor Tim for all you do for us. Thank you, Pastor Tim. You and the church have been such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tim, for uh, preaching the word. And I really appreciate you welcoming into your church. I appreciate it and thank you very much. Brother Tim, it's been uh, real good to be here at Grace with you. And I appreciate all your prayers for me. Thank you, Brother Tim. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Tim, for being faithful and leading our family. Thank you, Pastor Tim, for everything you've done. 
Uh, we love you very much. Hey, Pastor Tim, just wanted to tell you that we sure do love you, me, me and Ansley, and we're just so thankful that you're our pastor. And I thank y'all so much for all y'all doing ministry. I know there's a lot that goes into it. It's your time, it's resources, everything. And I, I just think, thank you for all y'all do. Uh, we want to just say thank you, Brother Tim. We appreciate your service to the Lord, and we have got so much for spiritual growth. Thank you, Brother Tim, for making our family feel a part of your church. Brother Tim, we want to thank you for being our pastor for the past 18 years and being my youth pastor before you became the pastor of this congregation. Our family truly loves you and appreciates you. Hey, Pastor Tim, I miss Opal. Hey. Hey. We love y'all and we miss you. And we are on deputation on the road in Colorado right now. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you. Let you know we appreciate you and all of your investment in us and all the things that you've taught us. Uh, we're just very thankful and we appreciate you. Love you. Love you. Hey, Brother Tim. As we're celebrating Pastor Appreciation Month, I just wanted to stop and take a, a minute to say thank you for all that you've done for myself and for my family. Uh, whether it be picking me up on the bus ministry back in 2000, uh, the countless rides that you gave me to church and to home, as well as many other events, um, all the time that you gave to me to, to mentor me and to, to show me what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ and to be in God's word, and, uh, to be able to go to the Christian school, just so many things that I'm so thankful for and that I mentioned quite a bit in my own testimony as I'm trying to encourage other people to follow Jesus. Uh, I think back in remembrance of all that you and your family and Grace Baptist Church has poured into me. And for that, I just want to say thank you. We were uh, thinking about making another video with all the bloopers, <laughs> but it'd be too long. But we truly do love you. And um, there's always one that's got to say something yes. because he because of, because he he can't keep up with time. He told me he'd, he'd do it in about 30 or 45 seconds, so I'm going to let him come, and then I'll finish up. I do humbly apologize. I'm not anybody special, but I did poorly manage my time Monday and Tuesday. I got tied up, got busy. But I have been here a long time. When I came here, I told that man sitting right there, I wasn't going to be here but a little while. I was going to go back to my home church. I came in here a wounded soldier, watched the church literally implode on itself. And did, I watched Mad Baptist disease. They had literally, they broward one another. When I came here, I did not expect it to be the spiritual hospital that it was. And there's lots of other things I could say, but I, I, I told him I was going to try to keep this down. So I want you to know something. I prayed about this, and God led me in this direction. I'm telling you that I appreciate you guys for what that life has been through for my life. I appreciate the selfless sacrifice that you did for this ministry. God called in you into this ministry, and you answered in this call. I appreciate the sacrifice time with your family, the family sacrifices, their time, not just here, but in the hospitals, in the jails, uh, going and visiting people. Your job is not a 24 on a uh, uh, 9 to 5 job. You don't work 8 hours or 12 hours and then you're off. Your job is 24-7, 365, all the time. At any given time, anybody in this congregation can call you and say, Preacher, I need advice. Preacher, I need prayer. Preacher, I need. Preacher, I need. Pastor, I need. Brother Tim, I need. And you're always there. Your wife is there. Your kids are there. They're backing you up, and they support you, and we, I love you for that. Two, I appreciate the fact that you 
stand up and you don't back up and you speak up on behalf of the local New Testament church, on most importantly, on behalf of the Word of God. Three, I appreciate that you are an under-shepherd and a sheepdog and not a hireling. An under-shepherd because you take this holy book right here and you exhort and you rebuke and you encourage the local New Testament church, not by your standard, but by the standard that's held in this holy book. A sheepdog, because you go, you don't, re you relentlessly, you go out and you beat the bushes looking for lost sheep to bring them in here, heal them and give them a home and a place and a family that they can come and they the fact that you stand on this particular book. Amen. The inerrant, inspired, preserved Word of God for the English-speaking people, otherwise known as the Revised 1611 King James Bible. Amen. You stand up for this. And I have a problem with somebody who doesn't. I'm sorry if you don't understand who thee and thou is. If I say thou art a fool and you don't understand that, uh, you're, as the words of the Apostle Paul, you're uh, ignorant on purpose or, you know, <laughs> You know, stupid on purpose, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. And I had lots more I wanted to say. There's lots of things that I wanted to. I appreciate you're not a hireling. Your reputation precedes you. If you were a hireling, you would be here for money, and you're not going to get rich in this church right here. If you were a hireling, you would be famous. We'd probably have stuff streamed all over the place, but I'm quite sure they cut us out quite a bit because of the standards that are held in this church right here. You're not a hireling because when somebody does wrong, you do, not by your standard, you go to them with this and you say, brother, sister, I'm sorry, this cannot, this won't fly. And it's because the sheepdog and the under shepherd you are, I appreciate you protect the flock. You're not just my pastor. You're not just my brother. You're my friend. Miss Opal, you're my sister, and you're my friend. Them kids over there, they're like my own grandkids. I love y'all, and I love everybody in this church, but I'm letting you know now, I would gladly lay down my life for any one of y'all. Y'all are my family. This church is my home. And it's because of God working through you and you answering the call, I appreciate you have made this a home. Every home has a leader. And this leader has made this a home. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks, Brother William. Today you've seen what this church is all about. It's not for everybody. But the ones that want to grow, this is the place. There ain't very many left. If God tarries, some of you may have to step up. But you better be ready because the devil's coming for you. But Brother Tim, we love you. Somebody loved you so much that they felt like you needed to have some snack. <laughs> <laughs> but he did something this year. And... Um, Everybody has, everybody needs to get away. And some people go fishing, some people do other stuff. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, if you pay attention to the scriptures, he had to get away. But he had to pray. And he signed up for a hunting camp this year. It's already been taken care of. But the church is going to reimburse you for that. But this is what we want to do. Amen. Thank y'all, church. Uh, man, uh, this was not expected at all. None of it. Uh, but uh, surprised me. But you did this morning, and uh, man, that was the greatest. The slideshow was the greatest ever, so uh, thank y'all, and 
Uh, God, we love y'all. This is home for us, Opal and I. We, this is our life, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a life for us. And so, but y'all make it the church. So it's not just Opal and I and our family. Uh, it's everybody. And so if you're visiting this morning, come on, be part of the family. And uh, we're, we're not the average local church down on the corner, but uh, we're, we're thankful for what the Lord's given us. So, Amen. All right, listen, we got brisket barbecue waiting. I love y'all. And uh, let's stand. Have we prayed for the food? We have not. All right, let's pray for the food. And then, uh, any spe- ladies, any special instructions on, like, going through the line or anything? Give us a minute. All right, you've had 20. What's going on? All right, thank y'all, church. Man, my heart is overjoyed. That was a blessing. And uh, amen. And won't better, amen? Won't better for yourself. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, your goodness. And, Lord, uh, Opal and I don't deserve any of this. And, Lord, we don't deserve such a wonderful church. And being here for 25 years, Lord, it's just a blessing and an honor. And, God, I just pray that you continue to grow this place. Lord, if, you, if, if, you, if you're not coming back tomorrow, next year, next week, Lord, just continue to send in families, Lord, I pray. Help us to build our new building, dear God. And I pray you'd be honored with that. And, Lord, uh, help us 